Hello, I'm Suzanne Freeman. I'm a member of First Baptist Church in Benson, Arizona, and I have the privilege of sharing Day 17 with you from a devotional written by Pastor Mike Lingenfelter called Stepping Forward. It is a walk through Ephesians. And so the title of today's is Where Union in the Church Begins. We know that it's important that the body of Christ be united. Jesus prayed in John 17 that we would be one as he and the Father is one. And it's so important because then we can draw people, the world, to Christ to be a united front. So Ephesians 4, 1 says, Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Ephesians, the first half of Ephesians 1 through 3, talks about our position in Christ. We are, um, um, we are part of his household. We are forgiven. We are adopted children. We can grow in relationship with him. He has equipped us. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. And not only that, but he has given us power to do what he's called us to do. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. And so if we understand our position, then we can move forward in our lives and walk it out. And that is what the second part of Ephesians 4 through 6 is talking about, is applying what we have learned about our position. And so um, how do we apply it? Walking in the Bible is really living it out. In biblical times, people walked everywhere. Um, and there was a, a destination. It wasn't walking a track or walking in circles. It was a destination. And it was good to walk with other people for safety, for accountability, just for fun, just for fellowship, to walk to a destination together. And we are on a walk. We're not lone rangers. We are walking with other fellow Christians. And it is important that we be unified and walk together. Um, my mom was here for a couple of weeks and she was sharing a story with me before I even knew that I was going to be sharing about unity today, sharing from Mike's, um, Pastor Mike's book. But she said when she was a kid, she attended a second Baptist church, <clears throat> was on, <clears throat> saying an undisclosed location. And one morning, like, there were two pianists. Pianist number one and pianist number two. And one morning, pianist number two happened to be on the bench. And they must not have been in agreement about that because pianist number one went up and, and let's just say that a physical altercation occurred. In other words, they started duking it out in front of the whole congregation. And this led to a split in the church between the the uh, pianist number one group and the pianist number two group. And it seems so silly, but it happens in so many congregations and really in our own hearts. We also we battle people. We battle other believers, other brothers and sisters in Christ. And God has called us to unity. I remember Pastor Mike one morning said that, you know, you have resentment in your heart if you are battling someone in your head. And that really spoke to me because I had been in a battle. I like it because I get the last word and I always win, <laughs> but we don't win. We do not win when we are fighting and think back to what Jesus's prayer was that we be one as he and the father are one. Jesus's prayer is going to be answered, but we don't want to be the ones that are hindering that progress. Uh, in the battles that we are facing. We want to be on his side. The enemy has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and he loves to divide and conquer, and he is the father of lies, and when we listen to him, we are working for him, and that is uh, in just unity in the body of Christ. So let's listen to Jesus. And the crux of it is what Pastor Mike brings up in this devotional. And it really is what is our walk, our individual walk. If we're all walking with Christ, then we're going to walk in unity. And we're going to walk in parallel with the position that he's called us to. So if we've been forgiven then we need to forgive. If we have been loved, which we have by Jesus Christ, then we need to love. And so that is how we need to walk. And if we're all walking in that, then we're going to be victorious and we're going to be in unity. So as we're thinking about this, let's reflect on these two questions. What is God saying to me right now? 
What is he speaking to you? Is there a sin that's holding you back? Is there something he's called you to that you have neglected? Um, make that right with him. And how should I respond? I encourage you respond with surrender. He has so many good things in store for you and for the body. And we need to walk forward, especially in this dark day and show and shine the light of Jesus Christ and the love in this world. Make them hungry and thirsty for Jesus Christ. Thank you.